Hello, I am Glenn Hall and today is March 31st, 2023. This video is called The Hour of Trial. I am going to talk about a few things before I go on to the last six judgments that Leland Earl uh, speaks about. If you have not watched my video on um, Christ's letter to the Church of Philadelphia, uh, I would urge you to watch that because that's where this idea of the hour of trial comes from. The Philadelphians, the Philadelphian church was a faithful church. It was a church, this is the church of the overcomer. This is a church of the 144,000, I believe. And this is the church where Jesus specifically says this in Revelation 3.10, Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. The hour of trial has almost begun. And I'm stopping here because Leland Earls and the revelation he received concerning the fourth plague said this. I want to reread this. Just before the fourth plague falls, there will be the dividing. The dividing will be twofold. First, I will divide or separate 144,000 of the choicest of my saints, of my Kodeshim, and suddenly remove them from the physical realm into the spiritual or heavenly realm. Their physical body shall be suddenly translated into glorified bodies. The taking of these 144,000 first fruits that you see in Revelation 14 verse 1 will cause a further division to take place. Those who are truly mine shall immediately recognize the significance of what has taken place. Without hesitation, they shall turn to me with their whole heart and seek me as never before. After a short time of earnest petition, my spirit shall be poured out in a mighty deluge of power. The effect of these stunning spiritual developments will be to divide those who truly mean business with me and those who have been mere professors. As never before, there will be a clear cut, there will be clear cut lines of demarcation between those who are truly all out Christians and those who want to make a pretense with a form of godliness. This is the meaning of the severance of the land of Goshen from Egypt, you see in Exodus 8, verses 22 and 23. Egypt is a type of this world ruled by Lucifer, the prince of darkness. Goshen thus becomes a type of those who have completely renounced Lucifer's kingdom, and have been regenerated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Those of the land of Goshen, symbolically speaking, will then be completely protected from all the succeeding plagues. This will be possible through the supernatural ministry of the 144,000 glorified saints who will be on constant duty and will have the power to appear and speak words of guidance and help. I believe that the way that God keeps the faithful Philadelphians from the hour of trial is because he will glorify them. They will be, the Philadelphians, the faithful ones, will be the 144,000 that are glorified just before 
the fourth plague happens. I believe we are there at that time. Clearly, we have experienced the first three plagues, the third being the unprecedented diseases that have come upon men and animals, especially as seen through COVID-19. And all of those first three plagues affected everyone, Christian and non-Christian, faithful Christian and a Christian who just says he's a Christian and really doesn't walk the walk. Those plagues affected all of us. The intensity has been getting stronger lately. Today, for example, you have news of uh, Donald Trump's indictment in New York. We're watching a movie. This is really going to help him be reelected next year. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I believe that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast. That means what is coming is going to be the mark of the beast in full, which means you will have no choice but to take the mark unless you are protected. You can only be protected if you flee to the mountains. The mountains are the glorified 144,000. So you are going to have to look to find those places in the earth. Now, if you were to divide the population of the earth by 144,000, you'll see that it's not necessarily a huge, going to be a huge geographical area. There will be, there should be overcomers, there should be mountains close to you that you will be able to go to. And notice this, the plagues do not touch God's people, starting with the fourth plague. So the fourth plague begins with the glorification of the overcomers. And then the faithful Christians, those who will be the bride and the guests of the bride, they will flee to the mountains and they will be protected by the overcomers. Now there is a hidden feast in scripture and it's called Second Passover. And, this, and also along with that is the Feast of First Fruits that follows immediately after Passover on the day after the Sabbath. This year, you go to Hebcal, it's H-E-B-C-A-L dot com, HebrewCalendar.com, but it's H-E-B-C-A-L dot com. And they have a calendar that shows you when Passover begins and the other feasts. Now, it's interesting. They're actually one day off when it comes to Passover because they say Passover begins uh, on the 15th of Nisan, which is actually April 6th this year. And the scripture says that 
Passover is on the 14th uh, or begins on the 14th because the Passover lamb was slain on the 14th between the two evenings, between the time when the 14th began, which would be on April 4th, and by the time that the 14th of Nisan ends, which is the evening of April 5th. Between those two evenings, the Passover lamb is sacrificed. So Passover really begins on the 14th of Nisan, but if you look at Hebcal, it says the 15th. This year, that day of the slaughter of the lamb would be April 5th. And then corresponding to scripture, Jesus would have been resurrected on the morning of, it's a Sunday morning, the 9th of April, and would have been, would have presented himself as the first fruits to God. And that's what happened. That regardless of which day he was crucified on, some people think it was um, Friday, some people think it's Thursday. Whichever day it was, Jesus ascended as a wave offering and as first fruits to God on the Sunday following the Sabbath, following Saturday. But that's not the hid, hidden feast. The hidden feast is found in Numbers chapter 9. By the way, reference for the feast of Passover and the feast of first fruits is in Leviticus chapter 23. Um, so you can read those scriptures. And I'm going to go to Numbers chapter 9 now. There's also a very detailed uh, description of Passover in the book of Exodus when it first, first occurs. And that is in uh, Exodus chapter 12. But let's go to Numbers chapter 9, starting with verse 1. And I am spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the people of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month, at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time. And that word at twilight means between the two evenings, literally between the two evenings. So it's on the fourteenth day. You shall keep it at its appointed time. According to all the statutes and all its rules, you shall keep it. So Moses told the people of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover in the first month on the fourteenth day of the month between the two evenings in the wilderness of Sinai according to all that I am commanded Moses. So the people of Israel did. And there were certain men who were unclean through touching a dead body so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron on that day. And those men said to him, We are unclean through touching a dead body. Why are we kept from bringing the Lord's offering at the appointed time among the people of Israel? And Moses said to them, Wait, that I may hear what I am will command concerning you. I am spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If any one of you or your descendants is unclean through touching a dead body or is on a long journey, he shall still keep the Passover to the Lord. In the second month, on the fourteenth day, between the two evenings, they shall keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break any of its bones. According to all the statute for the Passover, they shall keep it. And if anyone who is clean and is not on a journey fails to keep the Passover, that person shall be cut off from his people because he did not bring the Lord's offering at its appointed time. 
that man shall bear his sin. So there was a special provision for anyone who had touched a dead body or was on a long journey. In other words, at a place where he could not keep the Passover. Now, in the command that the Lord gave to Moses, he said that they should keep the second Passover according to all the statute for the Passover. And you can find all of the rules for Passover in Exodus 12. Uh, it's the most detailed in Exodus 12 and then Leviticus 23. That means there's the Feast of Unleavened Bread that goes on for seven days after the Passover date. And on the day after the Sabbath, there is the Feast of First Fruits. So there's a second Feast of First Fruits and a wave offering to the Lord. Well, Jesus was the first fruits. The first first fruits. But let's look at Revelation chapter 14. Verse 1, Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000, who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they were singing a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures, and before the elders. No one could learn that song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. And in their mouth no lie was found, for they are blameless. You see... In verse 4, these 144,000 are first fruits. And so I believe that on some second Passover, that will be the time of the glorification of the 144,000. Now there's an interesting thing to understand about the 144,000. They really know that they touch a dead body, and that dead body is theirs. As long as they're in the flesh, they cannot be perfect. They want to be perfect with their whole heart, but they cannot be perfect in the flesh. So from time to time, they will still sin. But they always repent because, you see, they are virgins. They have not defiled themselves. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They are the first fruits, and that's why they're chosen as the first as the first fruits. They know that they touch a dead body, and they know that they've been on a long, long journey to finally be glorified. So they meet the two criteria that God gave to Moses for establishing second Passover. Now this year, and you can find this on Hebcal, second Passover begins the evening of May 4th. It lasts through to the evening of May 5th. That would be when the Passover lamb was slaughtered. And then the morning of May 7th will be 
second feast of first fruits. So second Passover is Friday, May 5th. Second feast of first fruits is Sunday, May 7th. This could be the year, and I think it should be the year myself. Um, things are getting out of control. President Trump will be reelected next year. And then quickly implement the full mark of the beast. According to the word of the Lord to Leland Earls, this time, this hour of darkness is going to last about three and a half years. It corresponds, and we'll hear more about it later during the plagues, it corresponds to the plague of darkness that um, came upon Egypt. There has to be protection for those that remain, for the church, for the faithful church that remains during the hour of trial. You see, the hour, of, the purpose of the hour of trial for them, for those that were not part of the first fruits glorification, the reason for that is so that they will fully come out of Babylon, fully come out of Egypt, according to this word of the Lord to Leland Earls, fully come out of Satan's kingdom into the kingdom of God. They will have to be specially provided for because Satan is going to require that everyone take the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell in order to eat, in order to buy anything. So you would not be able to buy gas, electricity, anything you need to survive will be cut off to you, except for in the cities of refuge that God is setting up through his overcomers. Remember, in the Old Testament, God established cities of refuge in Israel so that people could flee there from the avenger of blood. Who is that? Satan. He wants your blood. And he believes he has a right to it because you are a sinner. And the reason why he does not have a right to your blood is because of the blood of Jesus that covers us. So I believe we are there. We're at, we're right about at the beginning of the hour of trial. That means that the glorification of the 144,000 is imminent. It's going to happen and it's going to happen soon. This glorification, this event, is what the church calls the rapture. And they think that every Christian who says they're a Christian, every person who says they're a Christian, is going to be part of that. When the faithful Christians that are left realize what has happened they will then understand that the rapture wasn't for everyone they will understand that there were things that they did ways that they lived that were not appropriate that their focus was on the world and not upon the Lord
So everything is going according to God's plan. Repent. Repent. Get the sin out. Seek God. Seek God with all your heart. Wash yourself with his word. Be in your word. When you wake up, think of the Lord. Don't think about worldly things. Don't think about Babylon. glorification of the first fruits is very near.